Welcome back to my channel, Simplified English 101. If you are new to this channel, please remember, like this video, leave a comment. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel and ring that good old notification bell so that you can be informed when a new video is posted. In today's lesson, I will be examining the setting of the short story, To Dad or In Memoriam. I'll also shed light on the author and her influence on the events of the story. I'll provide you with some background information on Barbados, as well as we will discuss the different settings or environments presented in the story. One very interesting thing that I've noticed about authors or writers is that they write what they know. They write who they know, the places they know, familiar things. Whether this is intentional or not, writers always tend to produce work that is familiar to them, whether it be their lives, their culture, their values, their experiences, etc. Now, this short story is no different because Polly Marshall, in her short story, To Dada in Memoriam, she writes about the familial. When we compare our personal experiences to the short story, we see many similarities. Now, we are going to be looking, as I did point out before, a little bit about the author so that we can, in essence, compare her life and experiences to the events of the short story. Let us begin. Now, as usual, I'll give you some pointers and I'll explain this to you so you can follow along through the pointers I've given. Now, like the author, the main character, who is also the narrator, was born in America, but she, of course, is affiliated with the Caribbean through her parents. Polly Marshall was originally known as Valenza Paulina Burke. She was born in April 9th in Brooklyn, New York. She was the daughter of Ada and Samuel Burke, who were both immigrants from Barbados. Similarly, the main character's parents were both natives of Barbados just like her parents. Burke, Barbadian roots, they stem from her parents and the fact that she grew up in the neighborhood with a significant number of West Indies family. Burke, like the child narrator, also visited her grandmother in Barbados. So when we look at it, we see that there is a connection between the life of the author and the story's narrator. Burke later described her grandmother as an ancestor figure whose spirit she believes continues to animate her life and work. So clearly, the author's personal experiences, her life, her cultural background, her values, she says that it is a part of our work. So we can expect that her personal experiences and the things that she writes about are familiar stuff, which of course will make the story much more interesting. Now let us look at the setting of Barbados, which is where the story events took place. While we do so, I am going to give you some backstory on Barbados. Again, you can follow along. I've made pointers for you to follow along, which you know, basically is a summarized version of my explanation. So now again, the story set in Barbados, as was previously mentioned in the 1930s. For us to understand the context of the story, we need to understand the different settings in which the characters were exposed. Remember that many of the Caribbean countries were colonies of Britain. We know this based on history, of course, and we know also that the colonizers and how the colonizers treat their colony, especially the Black ones, was, was really not good. So some history on Barbados. In about 1627, when the British colonized the Barbados, their main income earners were cotton and tobacco. It is believed or said that a Dutchman is the one who introduced sugarcane to the island and right after the economy became so dominated by large plantations. So sugarcane when it was introduced created a big boom in the industry. Slaves were imported from Africa by the thousands, And of course we know that's the work on the plantation that was booming. In that same time period the price of sugar fell because there was a lot of other competition from other Caribbean islands. So, you know, other Caribbean islands were producing sugar at the same rate, faster rate, and it was cheaper. And so Barbados, you know, had a little bit of fall financially. Now, apart from that, 
setback. The European wars, the American Revolution, all of these interfered with the Barbadian trade. And they also suffered severely. And they also suffered several other calamities like hurricanes, you know, in the Caribbean, we're prone to that, cholera and other epidemic. Now let's fast forward to the 1920s and 30s which is um, to some extent where the story took place in the 1930s. Barbados, they saw an increase in population. You know, the population began to rise. The cost of living began to rise. And of course, they were, while all of these increases going on, they are on a fixed wage scale. Crazy, huh? This caused spontaneous rioting. And in the late 1930s, were affected by the Great Depression. Now, this Great Depression was rough for Barbados, like any other and other Caribbean islands, including the entire world. In 1920s and 30s, Barbados also saw the introduction of the trade union. But the Great Depression, it was so crazy that it created a large-scale unemployment, poverty on the island, malnutrition, illiteracy, deplorable living um, condition or deplorable housing, just to name a few of the things that affected them. So the image being presented here is that it was very rough for Barbados, jumping out of slavery, jumping into some kind of revolution as it may see, jumping into a sort of independence for the most part, and then having to face all of these things for the people living on the island, it must have been devastating. By the 1930s to 1937, they experienced the biggest labor strike, which was called the 37 labor strike. Now, by that time, Barbados was divided by race, with the white elite holding economic and political power and the black natives doing minimal jobs. Similarly, to slavery days, there was a lack of opportunity, employment for blacks, which of course, was rigidly reinforced by the whites. Some of the contributing factors to the strike were low wages, high unemployment and underemployment, racist attitudes of colonial administrators and employers, lack of representation for the Blacks, no or poor established structure for resolution of disputes, and of course, economic crisis, which is among many other things. Now, Barbados remained a country still ruled by the plant plantation and their owners even a hundred years after slavery was abolished. And the poor treatment continued. Again, the image presented is how the people were living in the 1930s. You want to think about poor jobs, if any existed, racist attitudes from colonial administrators, although slavery was abolished. You want to think about the society being divided by blacks and whites, blacks being the majority of persons living on the island, whites being the minority, yet the minority controlling the power. You want to think about all of these things when you are reading the short story. Now, this strike was initiated by Clement Payne. He was born in Barbados to Barbadian parents. After returning to Barbados, he began holding meetings. He lived in Trinidad for a while. So after he returned to Barbados, he began holding meetings and announcing his intention to form a trade union. And of course, this trade union would be beneficial to the Black. Now, these meetings, they attracted large crowds of workers who were suppressed, of course, by the police. And remember, in those days, the police was put in place to keep the Blacks in check, in line. They were created by the British to suppress the people and to take care of their interests. Now, this labor strike was so crazy that they had 14 dead, 47 injured, and five people arrested. So this is some backstory on Barbados. Now, let us look at the setting of the short story to Dado in Memoriam. And we are going to be looking at some of the things that we will expect based on the backstory given. Now, of course, you can follow along on the pointers given. Now, we will notice that the story is mentioned in Barbados in, the, in that time period of 1937, which we already know had many political changes, civil unrest, strikes on the island. So it was a difficult time period for the people. It was rough. We will also notice that in the story, the mention of Bridgetown, which is the main town with all the major activities taking place in Barbados. And to this day, it still is. Now, notice also that in the story that the pair is also located in Bridgetown, which means that, of course, it is the major town. We will also notice that 
the mention of colonial ties, which shows up in the main products and the infrastructure of the building. It is also seen in the sugar cane mentioned and the fruit arcades in the story. All of these things are remnants of slavery or colonial life. But we will see the mention of the boats that carried them from New York, which means that this was a major way or probably the only way of travel for them at that time. We will also see the mention of the word Larry, which of course was a part of, or again, remnants of colonial life. Finally, we will see the mention of St. Andrew, which is located in the hills, and it is known for its hilly terrain. Now, this place, St. Andrew, it was once a settler for many Scottish people, and so when we get to the in-depth in the story, we will see Dada mentioning her relatives from St. Andrew and how they, they act and how she detests it. And we will get to see, you know, why is it that although on a small island, persons in one parish, they are different from persons in another parish. And that's because you had so many persons from different parts of Britain living in different parishes. And so persons would adapt to the familial. We will also see the mention of St. Thomas, which is located in the center of Barbados. And of course, it is more like a town in comparison to St. Andrew. We will see the mention of the setting of New York. Now, this setting is important in the story because it serves to compare and contrast the difference in culture and the upbringing between the two strong-willed proud women the grandmother and the child from the different generations. Now, now that we have examined the setting of the short story, let us now look at some of the different settings that are presented. And we know when we talk about different settings, we talk about the physical setting, the social setting or environment, if you may, the col cultural one, the economical one. So we're going to look at the different settings that are presented in the story. Now we're going to look at the physical setting and of course for the physical setting we are going to start with Bridgetown. Now again you can follow along on the point just given. In Bridgetown we notice that it has a disembarkation shed. Now this is where the travelers leave the boat clearly. Um, this is where the pier is. Now anywhere you find a pier you know that commercialization takes place there. So Bridgetown clearly is a town. So when you want to describe the setting of the text or you want to look at the contrast between the two, these are some of the things that you can point out in the physical setting. Also, we see that outside was bright um, in lines two of the story. As the first paragraph, it says daylight flooding from outside. So we know it gives the idea that it is in somewhere that is sunny. So right there, the physical setting is what the place looks like. Next, we see the tropical sunlight reflecting on the water at the bay. Now, a bay is a small body of water that is set off from the main body. Rather, it's like an inlet of water. We also see the description of the site, sound and smell of Barbados, which is mentioned as an alien site and sound. We also see the lorry, which is a large vehicle that is used to transport goods on a road. We see the clogged busy streets, which is filled with the cars and the buses and the bicycle, the donkey carts, the people, all of that. We see the dim little shops and offices. We see the women with baskets on their head. We see the people on the streets that they were loud and we can hear them, their voice stories. So all of this is the physical setting of Bridgetown. Now, when we want to look at the contrast between Bridgetown and somewhere else, these are some of the things that we want to point out. Now, let us look at the physical description of St. Thomas. Now, for St. Thomas, we see that they had cane fields on both sides of the road. They had Marl Road, small tattering houses, arches with various trees, gullies bay on the field, the trees created bright light and shadows. So this is a physical description of Barbados. Now again, when we are looking at the use of contrast, we can contrast the settings and these are some of the points that you can mention. So let us now look at the physical setting of New York. So in New York, we see that the houses are made of um, brownstone, unlike Barbados. We see they have a tree, the only tree mentioned is chestnut. We see that unlike the Barbados, it snows in New York. We see that they have towering worlds of steel and building of concrete. They have newer machines and technologies and appliances and she, the narrator made a list of all of these. And unlike Barbados, they have fewer trees. So when we are looking at comparing the setting or the use of contrast in the text, we can, as I pointed out before, compare the setting and we can look at the differences and the similarities that exist between 
the two. The physical setting makes it easy to connect the economical setting of Barbados. As we have seen, the main town of Bridgetown has all the amenities of any urban area, though it is described as sad and slow. It has all the offices, stores, shipping center, etc. While St. Thomas is laced with cane fields on both sides and of the Mar Road and small tattering houses. Despite this, Bridgetown is nothing like the mother and city of New York. Now, this makes it clear to us that though Barbados appears busy and developing, it has a long way to go. The physical setting also does a lot because it makes it makes it easy for us to understand why the narrator felt the way she did when she first arrived, because she is not familiar with the alienness of the setting. Now let us move on into another aspect of the setting or the environment. The social setting or environment. Now, the social setting has to do with a person's society and all the things surrounding that can influence them or that society. It includes their relationships, the institutions, their culture, and it also doesn't include aspects of the physical setting. The social setting in the story to Dada in Memorial, we see the structure of the family unit coming out. We see colorism coming out. We see the grandmother's monarchial figure in the community. We see the difference in culture and the difference in the way that people socialize. And all of these settings, they do contribute to the character development and to how the character is presented or seen in our eyes. So let us look at them. First, family structure. The mention of our grandmother's 14 children, it helps us to create the image of life in the 1930s where there were no contraceptions and women or parents, they saw their children as a means to a better life. So a woman would have a lot of children because for them is their pension, is their old age pension. And that is especially true for the Caribbean. As such, having so many children for her is the norm, especially for poorer families coming right out of slavery. It was the norm for them in slavery to give birth to a lot of children because having a lot of children meant that the plantation owners would have been rich. And so that, that was instilled in them for, for years. And so coming out of slavery, even a hundred years after slavery, you still saw black women having a lot of children, even in today's society. That is still reflected. There were many illegitimate fair-skinned children from these white masters' estate. This reinforces the idea of the white man's ability to not only colonize, but also to rape the land. The idea back in slavery was that the master could come in and take his fair share from any woman that he wanted and ensure that she produced someone else to work on the plantation. And this contributed or created a lot of brown skinned people, a lot of lighter skinned persons that are different from the shade, one of the shades of Africa. So you'll see a lot of persons who look more white than black, but in reality, they are Af from African descent. No, it also reinforces the theme of colonization. It also reinforces the theme of colorism within the Caribbean and Blacks preferring lighter complexion. So this is a part of the social setting or environment in the sense that we did see the narrator did tell us that her grandmother prefers lighter skinned people and they were not of that group. So the notion in Barbados, in the Caribbean then, was that if you're lighter skin, you are prettier, you're lighter skin, you're more fortunate, you're lighter skin, you're more blessed. And so then being dark skin was detestable for many persons because of the mindset and the social norms that existed. Another thing that we see in the story is that of colorism, which I did mention earlier, the preference that light was more beautiful or better. It existed in that time period. And so one should not be surprised when we hear how Da feels about the lighter skin in comparison to the dark skin, because that was the norm. As such, Da's preference of wanting or loving fair skin more than black skin, it is just the norm. 
So one should not be surprised when we see that also. Another thing that we'll see is the idea of our grandparents' approval or our grandmother's approval when it comes to their grandchildren. This is seen in the text. They were presented to Dado, giving us the image that the grandmother in the family is almost like the queen of the castle. And once she approves, then that's okay. Especially because we know that Da prefers light skin. We also see the interaction of people in the story. The striking difference is in the way the people of New York greet others in comparison to the way the natives from the different parishes of Barbados greet each other. Now this shows the difference in cultural setting and also social behavior. And this is why we're looking at the social setting or environment. We notice that the people of St. Andrew who are linked to Scottish settlers are more unsophisticated and awkward. Now, if we know anything at all about history, people from certain parts of England will see people from Scotland, even to this day, as vulgar and rude and unkept and all of these things. So when we look at people from Scotland now in the Caribbean, in the 1930s, it's the same depiction that we see. Dada saw them as weird and unsophisticated and just awkward in everything that they did and even in the way that they greeted their family from New York. While people from St. Thomas, they are seen as a little bit more upscale, maybe because it's a town area, and they are seen as a little bit more exposed and confident and knowledgeable like Dada. We also see a difference in culture. We see the mention of the popular dances that, are, that the narrator, you know, told her grandmother about and the different songs and the dress code of people in New York in comparison to Barbados. You know, granddaughter talk about the fur coats that she had and she wore them in winter. While in Barbados, we see the way that daughter dressed to come to meet them at the airport. She wear a long, old-fashioned white dress. Culture is just totally different. When daughter heard about some of the things that she did in New York, like fight white people, she was shocked because the culture is so different from that in Barbados in the 1930s. So the social setting within the story is also very, very important. This has taken us to the end of our video for today, where we looked at the setting of the short story to Dada in Memoriam. I hope that it was beneficial to you. Please remember to like this video, comment on the video or the content of the video. Let me know your feedback. It is always appreciated. Always remember to subscribe, 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 subscribe to my channel. Until then, bye.